Hello, welcome everybody. Here is your video lesson on 11.1 and 11.2, which are areas of quadrilaterals and triangles. Make sure you get your title down in your notes. Feel free to stop the video if I'm going too fast. The goal of this entire lesson is to do a couple different things. We're going to be trying to find perimeters and areas of different shapes. And in this case, it's quadrilaterals and triangles. So area and perimeter. Let's talk first of all about perimeter. What is the perimeter? Perimeter is distance around an object. It's a D. Now, how do you do that perimeter? You just have to just add all the sides. That's your formula. Sometimes it's difficult to figure out the measurement of one of the sides. You might have to use Pythagorean theorem or trigonometry, but to find the perimeter, all you need to do is add all sides. The units for perimeter are usually going to be things like feet or inches or centimeters. Now, area, area is how much you can fit inside of an object. And here's where it gets tricky. When you're finding the area, unlike perimeter, where you have to just add all the sides, you have to use a formula. And it depends on your shape which formula you need to pick. Most of the time it's pretty easy. You just plug numbers into a formula. But sometimes you might have to figure out pieces of that formula using things like trig or Pythagorean theorem. Um, units on area is opposed to perimeter where it's feet, it's going to be square feet or square centimeters, etc. So this would be a foot, whereas this is a square foot. Now here are your formulas for area. So we're going to talk about these. The first one is just your simple polygons, which in this case, um, I have an example over on the side here with our diagrams. But in this case, um, I think the most common shapes are parallelograms. Rectangles, squares, and even a rhombus. I'm going to abbreviate here because I'm going to be running out of room. If you're going to use, if you're going to figure out the area of one of these shapes, you're going to want to use this formula, base times height. Squares might be the only exception because the base and the height are the same. You might be able to do side squared, but otherwise those formulas will work for all those shapes. When you have a triangle, and then here are, are several or three drawings of different triangles, you have to use the base times the height again, but you're going to have to use half of it. And it makes sense because if this is a rectangle, the triangle makes up half of a rectangle. That's why it's not just base times height, it's half of base times height. So these are two formulas you'll need to use for these types of shapes, these quadrilaterals and these three-sided three -sided angles. And then you get to an odd shape that was going to be a trapezoid. So the trapezoid formula, very useful for later shapes is this odd formula. It's one half of the height and then you take the two bases and add them. So the bases in a trapezoid are the parallel sides. So this side and this side. So those would be your bases. So you had to figure out what measurements those are um, either through some sort of math figuring it out or you could just pick it right off of the picture and you need to add those two numbers. After that, you have to figure out the height. Now, we're going to talk specifically about the height, but height is very important. Anytime you use the word height, you must have a perpendicular to the base. So some people get caught thinking this is the height, but this side is on a slant. It does not form a right angle with one of the bases. So that's going to be our biggest challenge is trying to figure out those heights. And then these are odd shapes. These are kites. And you can use this um, formula also sometimes for a rhombus. 
and that is when you take one half of the diagonals and multiply them. So the diagonals are connecting the opposite corners. So if I knew that length and that length, I would multiply them, and then I would just take half of that result. And same thing for this kind of like elongated kite. Those are the two diagonals. All right, get to some examples. This first example is find the area and the perimeter, and it tells you what shape it is. It tells you that it is a parallelogram. So I'm going to begin with perimeter because that's pretty easy for this shape. The perimeter is just all sides, and since it's a parallelogram, the top and the bottom are the same. So it's 48 plus 48. And then the right and the left sides are both 36. Plus 36, plus 36. So perimeter in this case, and it's not always the case, but in this case it's pretty easy. It's 168 feet. Now when you're going to figure out area, in this case it's going to be a little bit more challenging. So area for a parallelogram is base times height. I often like for the areas to write the general formula before I start plugging in numbers that will help you get partial credit on tests and quizzes. So the base is pretty easy. The base is the parallel sides of both the trapezoids and parallelograms and rectangles and squares. So the parallelograms or the parallel sides in this case are 48 feet. Let me kind of erase this so you can see that 48 so it doesn't get hidden. Now the height is, is the difficult one. What is the height? Well, a lot of people get caught by thinking it's this side here, 36, but that does not form a right angle with the base. This is going to be the height. So the question is, how do I find that height? Well, if you notice here, I have a right triangle, and I'm going to draw that right triangle separate, and I know that this is a 30 degree angle right there and I know that this side right here is 36 feet. So I'm going to use my special right triangles. This is L, this is L square root of 3, and this is 2L to figure out this magic side. And what's the magic side? I'll trace over in blue. That's the magic side because that's my height. So that's the side I need to be looking for. So in this case, when I'm figuring that out, um, this side right here is 36 equals 2L. So I'm going to take this L and divide by 32, I get 18. So in this case, I'm going to plug that 18 in for this side, and I'm going to get 18 times the square root of 3. So I'm going to substitute that in here, in for my height. And of course, that is a decimal answer. So whatever 18 times the square root of 3 is, and I'm going to multiply that out, um, I think, I believe this is 31.17. And let me just grab my calculator here and multiply this out. 31.17 multiplied by 48 gives you 1,496. And then if I round... Um, you know, 0.1, and if I use the entire decimal, I would have like 0.5. So I'm going to put a little wiggly equal sign here and go 1496.1, or this, if you use the whole decimal here and didn't round this one, you would have had 0.5. So I'll accept both of those for now. We'll talk about that in class. Since this is area and these are in feet, this is square feet. Now, in this case, I used 30, 60, 90 triangles. That's not always... I've got four examples today. Here's example two. Once again, find area and perimeter. Well, let's start with perimeter like I did in the last case, and sometimes it's really easy. You just add all sides. But in this case, my three sides are 67, 46, and I don't know. So 67 plus 46 plus this missing side. Well, if you want to pause the video and see if you can figure out how to find that missing side, go for it. I'm going to use Pythagorean Theorem here, and I'm going to go a squared plus b squared, which is my missing side, I'll call it b, and that equals 48 squared. And then when I figure all this out, um, 
actually I made a little error here. Let me fix this. My C is my missing side. So let's try that again. 14 squared plus 48 squared equals C squared. This becomes 2,500 when I square everything out. And then when I take the square root of both sides, C, or that missing side, is going to be 30. So then I have 30 here, and my perimeter then is 163 feet when I put all these together. In this case, that was the more challenging of the pieces of the problem. Area, in this case, for a triangle is 1 half base times height. Notice how I'm writing my general formula. Then I'm putting my base, I'm going to call this my base, which is 46. And don't forget, like I always said, the height must be perpendicular to the base, so it must be this amount. So that has to be a perpendicular. Well, I don't have the perpendicular there, I have it outside the triangle, which happens sometimes. So that's just 48. So when I multiply all of this out, I get 1,104 square feet. Picking the heights is really the only challenge. Example 3. Find the area of a trapezoid. Area equals 1 half height, base 1 plus base 2. This is the general formula. Then I need to start substituting in numbers. I like to kind of always start with what's my bases. My bases are the parallel sides, like I said on the first slide. One of the first slides, so 40 and 18. So you're going to do 40 plus 18. It's going to be 58. And then my height has to be perpendicular to the bases, and lo and behold, this one is. So this is pretty simple. Now be careful on your calculator that you need to do that first. Um, if you want to do it in your head, it's really easy. It's 58, 15 times 1 half, or 0.5. And that result is going to be 435. Watch your units. In this case, it's meters, so area is square meters. And problem. Find the area of the kite. Now, the area formula for a kite is 1 half diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Let me eliminate this and put this one in blue so you can see what I'm talking about in my picture. So I'm going to call this diagonal 2. It doesn't really matter. And let me call this diagonal 1. Now, if you remember your properties of kites, um, this is 16 right there. So this is also 16 because the kites' um, diagonals are perpendicular and the one of them is bisected always. The one that looks like it should be bisected is bisected. So if this is 16 on this side, the other one's 16 too. So that diagonal 2, we're going to call that 16 plus 16, which is 32. Then you have this magic half, always needed. Then you got this diagonal 1, which is the red one. Well, it's going to be for diagonal 1, I'm going to do 35 plus this right here. I just am not sure what that is. Hmm, but let's look at what I got here. Hey, look right here. I've got a right triangle because the diagonals are perpendicular. So if I go a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and I substitute my hypotenuse in for c, and in this case that's 20, and my a can be 16, and my b is the thing I'm trying to find. So when you get this all down, you get B equals 12. Once I square root it, I'm running out of room, so I'm not going to show the work. I hope by now you can do the Pythagorean theorem. So that 12 gets substituted here into 35 plus the 12, because that would be the whole diagonal. So that ends up to be 47. And then you just type this all in into your calculator and you get 752 and of course you need to remember your units this is area so it's not just meters it's square meters all right it's going to be a tricky lesson there's two lessons that I gave you in one here so make sure you get all this down thanks for listening